Hello, I'm David Kelly. I'm a senior fellow at the Atlas Society and a consultant to the Atlas Shrugged Movies. Anyone who values freedom is rightly concerned about power. We worry about the power of one person or group to influence others, to get them to do what those who wield the power want. But power is not all of a type and not always a threat. A celebrity has the power to attract attention. A persuasive writer, like Ayn Rand, has the power to persuade and change minds. A business has the power to win customers by offering them good products at affordable prices. In all these cases, someone is offering us a positive value, and we choose whether to go for it. Political power is different. It is the power based on force. It influences us to obey laws and edicts and to pay taxes by offering us the negative incentive of putting us in jail, seizing our property if we don't comply. The difference between economic and political power is on display in the following scenes from Atlas Shrugged, part three. Yeah, I need you to check this one again, Eddie, will you? Morning. Thank you. What is it? Did they release the rolling stock? There's a very important dinner tomorrow night at the Wayne Falkland. I promised the boys that you'd be there. Seriously, Jim, a dinner. Do you have any idea what's going on here? Thompson's inner circle Why? will be there. We're going to talk about shipping the harvest. You want to be in on that decision, don't you? They're going to decide how to save the harvest at a dinner. If you really want to help your farmer friends, now's your chance. Friends, they're our customers, Listen, Jim. Listen, it's formal, but don't overdo it. It would please them. Nobody, not even Dagny Taggart, will deny that there are times when it's necessary to sacrifice the parts for the sake of the whole. What parts are we talking about, Mr. Meggs? Hmm. Well, the sickly parts, of course. Like Minnesota. They have to be sacrificed in order to save the whole, the entire system. Sacrifice Minnesota. Well, yes. We have to keep cross-country routing intact in case we need to move troops between states. You understand, balance peacekeeping with the recovery. To keep order. You cut off Minnesota, you cut off the supply of wheat. You might be able to sacrifice an arm or a leg, but you cannot save a body by sacrificing its heart or its brain. Well, we're depending upon the local farmers in the Northeast to pick up the slack. <laughs> We're counting on them. There aren't enough local farmers to feed a population that size. You know, Miss Taggart, it's a great responsibility to hold the decision of life or death over millions of people. Sacrifice thousands if necessary. But we must have the courage to do so. We have to be practical, scientific. Public welfare is Pipe one down, of our Jimmy. biggest. Cuffy, there's trouble in California. There's talk of seceding from the union. Oregon's overrun by gangs. They've murdered two tax collectors. Excuse me. Cuffy's right. Let's move the rail stock from Minnesota. Eddie. What? How long ago? I'll be there in 10 minutes. Excuse me, gentlemen. Dagny? Da Sit Dagny, down, where are you Jimmy going? Boy. We're dropping Minnesota. When Coffee Meg says it's a great responsibility to hold the decision of life or death over millions of people, to sacrifice thousands if necessary, but we must have the courage to do so, he reveals the brutality of political power. He and the other power brokers have destroyed the economy of voluntary exchange. And now they take pride in their willingness to sacrifice thousands of people. They consider moving troops more important than moving grain. 
was ran too extreme, it couldn't happen here, you might think. Well, I hope not. But it did happen elsewhere in the 20th century. Soviet communist ruler Joseph Stalin deliberately caused the deaths of millions of people from famine in order to collectivize farming. In China, under Mao Zedong, even more millions died from the so-called Great Leap Forward, during which most private businesses and most long-distance trade were banned. In America, though, thousands of very sick people are prohibited from making their own decisions about experimental cures, while the Food and Drug Administration dithers. At least a 1,000 people have died unnecessarily in traffic accidents because they were driving under protected cars mandated by the fuel efficiency standards issued by the Department of Transportation. All of these are deadly exercises of political power. By contrast, Dagny wants to move the wheat from Minnesota to serve both the farmers there and their customers in the East. When her brother Jim, president of the railroad, says, if you really want to help your farmer friends, now's your chance, Dagny responds, friends? They're our customers, Jim. As the head of operations for the railroad, Dagny can offer the farmers a positive value, the shipment of their wheat into the markets in the East. And they offer her the positive value, the revenue that they pay her for transporting the wheat. Would the farmers want to have a lower price for shipping their wheat? Sure. But they're willing to pay Dagny's price. Would Dagny like to charge more for shipping the wheat? Sure. But she can make money at the market price, and anything higher would diminish sales. What she wants is a win-win trade in which both sides gain, and both sides respect the other's independence. Leftist critics of capitalism claim that wealthy businesses wield uncontrolled power over their workers by dictating wages, and over their customers by deciding what goods to offer at what prices, over communities by determining where to put their plants. On that premise, there's no difference between economic and political power. The only alternatives are so-called oligarchic control by capitalists or democratic control of capitalists by government. Ayn Rand explicitly rejected the equation of economic with political power. Economic power is the power to produce and to trade what one has produced. Political power rests on the government's use of force. As Ayn Rand put it in one of her essays, wealth in a free market is achieved by a free, general, democratic vote, the sales and the purchases of every individual who takes part in the economic life of the country. No one has the power to decide for others or to substitute his judgment for others. Economic power is exercised by means of a positive, by offering men a reward, an incentive, a payment, a value. Political power is exercised by means of a negative, by the threat of punishment, injury, imprisonment, destruction. In short, economic power is the power to help. Political power is the power to harm.